uh, being uh, an overcomer tonight. Uh, in Jesus' name, let us have ears to hear and a heart to receive what you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Tonight, I want to talk about being fully persuaded. Uh, it's the general topic of confidence, having confidence uh, in the Lord. Uh, we see that uh, Abraham was fully persuaded. And when I've looked at that, I thought, wow, that was, that's always been so impressive to me that Abraham was fully persuaded. But when I've studied this topic, uh, I found out that he wasn't a superhero uh, in confidence, mm -hmm. uh, but there was a reason uh, that he was fully persuaded. And that's what we're going to look at. And I want you to know uh, at the beginning of this message that you can be fully persuaded in mm -hmm. the promises of God and in the uh, in what God is doing in your life. You can be fully persuaded. A lot of times we we think, well, the times I may have faith, the times I may not, but I want you to know that you can forever be fully persuaded. Uh, and, and that's the assurance that we have from the word of God. And of course, uh, when Abraham was described as being fully persuaded. Um, that was um, Romans 4, uh, verse uh, 22. He was fully persuaded of the promise that God had made him, and he, at, he had patience, and he received the promise. And, and we might think, well, that was all about uh, uh, Abraham, but, you know, if you go on a little bit further in the book of Romans to Romans 14, verse 5, it says, let every man be, let every person yeah. be fully persuaded in his own mind, in his mind. So it's about the mind. Uh, we have to get things under control and, and get in our mind. And so it's not about feelings. It's not about uh, emotions. It, it's about just looking at the scriptures and as a result of studying the scriptures, we can have confidence in the Lord and confidence in the things that he has promised each of us. I know the Lord has promised each of you many, many things. Mm. And you can be persuaded, fully persuaded uh, that what he has promised and what he has begun in your life, he will bring it to a successful conclusion uh, that's the way our God operates. So I want to look first uh, at Abraham and think, why, why was he fully persuaded? And, and this passage of Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 18, it, it gives us a, an indication of why he was fully persuaded. Again, it wasn't about feelings. It wasn't about emotions. It was just the scriptures coming alive to him. And so let's, I'm going to ask Sherry to read uh, these few verses, Hebrews 6, beginning in verse 13. And this is from the New International Version. And it says, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Go, go ahead. Okay. In verse 16, people swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the, of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Okay, so uh, in the King James, it uses the word uh, strong consolation. And what that means is a strength, an inner strength, so that because of God's promises, not only his promises, but his oath. It's said by two, two things. The two things are the promise and the oath. Uh, and he wanted to put an end to any 
uh, doubt or confusion or argument about the case. And that's when he swore and he swore by himself. And so uh, he, he cannot lie. And so we have these two things. And it's, it's the same thing for us. We have uh, these two things. We have these promises and the oath. And, and the oath came in from the covenant that he made with Abraham. They, they had a covenant mm -hmm. uh, together. So it was the blood covenant promises. So why could Abraham be fully persuaded? It was because of the uh, blood covenant promises mm. that God had made to him. So he made the promises and he also gave a covenant. Well, that's exactly what we have in Christ Jesus. We have promises, the promises that uh, he has provided for us and also mm. Uh, the covenant, and it's a blood covenant because Jesus hung on the cross and shed all of his blood, so it was a blood covenant, and so uh, our promises are really backed up by the blood covenant, Hallelujah. and so we can have confidence mm. in what God has promised us. You can have confidence in what God has promised you. Uh, it's very important for us to understand that this is not about emotions or it's not about the way we feel when we get up in the morning. We, sometimes we may feel up or sometimes we may feel down. Well, uh, regardless of how we feel, it's not about us. It's about the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, in Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles uh, 32, 8, there was an enemy coming against Jerusalem and King uh, Hezekiah said, that uh, the Lord God is with us and he will fight for us in this battle. Hallelujah. In the battles. Hallelujah. And the people gained confidence from this. It was those words. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to recognize today that you can gain confidence by hearing the scriptures, by studying the scriptures yourself. You can gain confidence. And we are told, let every person let every person be fully persuaded in his mind. That's very important for us. Uh, just settle it in your mind that you have confidence uh, in Jesus Christ. So it's all, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's not about what you've done. Uh, and that's the reason we can look at Abraham. Abraham uh, had a lot of faults. He, he did a lot of... Uh, uh, things that were not pleasing to God, and it's obvious. I mean, he'd lie. He lied to people about who his wife was. Uh, couldn't even uh, mm -hmm. acknowledge who his wife was, and and uh, he committed adultery, and on and on. So he was a he was a human being, and he was frail and fragile, and and uh, but yet he made a decision in his heart and in his mind that God was able, able to bring forth Amen. Amen. to bring forth the promises. And God had backed those up with, he had the promise and the oath. And neither one of those could change because God cannot lie. Uh, he just wouldn't exist uh, anymore if he lied, but he cannot lie. So it's not a, a matter mm -hmm. of will he lie or not lie. He cannot lie. And we have promises but it's not about whether or not we've earned them uh, because we've all uh, fallen and fallen short uh, of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But it's not about us. It's not about uh, it, have we done everything right. It's about Jesus Christ did everything. And on the cross, he said, it's finished. It is finished. We finished everything. Now, uh, Philippians 3 uh, I believe it's uh, 13 that says, we who serve God by the spirit and through the spirit have no confidence in the flesh. So just make that decision in your mind that, that you do not have confidence in your abilities, in your intellectual abilities, in your physical abilities, in your financial abilities. It's that all of those things are flesh. Uh, and carnal. And you have to make a decision. We're not going to put our confidence in flesh, but we're going to put our confidence 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what Hezekiah said? He said, the Lord God is with us, us. and he's going to fight for oh, us. And as a result of that, they gained confidence. That's what the New International Version said. Well, I want you to know that uh, there are a lot of things that, that come to support uh, confidence. And uh, the first one is faith. Uh, we have confidence by faith. That's Ephesians 3, uh, 12. In him, in Christ, and uh, by faith in Christ, we have confidence. So our confidence mm -hmm. doesn't come in our natural abilities, but it comes by faith. If we are serving the Lord uh, in the spirit, then we can have confidence. We can have confidence. You know, uh, having confidence uh, is a commandment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Lord spoke to Joshua in uh, Joshua 1 9 and said, Have not I commanded you to be strong, strong. and of good courage? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so it's not a wishy washy thing. I'm, I may get up today <laughs> and I may be strong and uh, courageous. No, it's a commandment. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. So, so the first thing is faith. And of course, you might say, well, I don't have a lot of faith. But let me tell you, faith comes by hearing, by hearing. and hearing by uh, the word of law of God, the word of God. And, and that's how, how we get faith. And so uh, if you don't have enough faith to build confidence, well, hear the word. Hear Yes, Hear the amen. word, let it amen. come forth. Amen. So you can um, let people uh, preach to you, speak to you. You can get it on TV. You can get it over tapes or videos or YouTube. Uh, you hear the word. You hear the word. Or go to church services. Uh, hear the word. Have friends that will pour into your life. Amen. And, amen. and they will cause you to have faith. And then you can have confidence. So confidence is not going to stand on its own. It's got to have something undergirding oh, it. Oh, hallelujah. And, and Ephesians 3.12 says uh, it's in Christ and faith in Christ. And we know faith comes by hearing the word. Now, I want to uh, digress a little bit here and talk about faith and to say that it's important for us to have people around us who will build us up in faith. Amen. Uh, Amen. You, you might think, well, Jesus Christ well, was the son of God and he could do anything. But uh, it makes an interesting statement in Mark chapter six. Uh, he went into his own hometown and went into the synagogue there. And it says there he could do no, no mighty me. works. Even Jesus couldn't do mighty works because of their doubt, doubt and, and unbelief. unbelief. And so you've got to have people around you who believe and because it's about faith. And if you have people around you speaking into your life that have doubt and unbelief, then it's going to keep you uh, from being in faith. And there were many times, oh, we've, uh, Sherry and I have been members of many different congregations, uh, but anytime they would come against healing, uh, the mm -hmm. things of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, the Holy Spirit would. Uh, God would just lead us out of those places. Uh, mm. One time, and you've probably heard this before, but uh, we were sitting in a congregation and the uh, the preacher began to say that God doesn't heal. And uh, so Sherry and told that, he had, that you had to accept what the enemy was doing. So what happened then, Sherry? Well, I sat there and he just kept uh, bringing that forth and and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, leave or die. Uh, because at that time, I had received a miracle from cancer. And then the enemy tried to bring some of those symptoms back on me. And uh, there was, uh, he tried to bring some fear and anxiety upon me. And, and so the Holy Spirit said, leave or die. And I just kept sitting there. He spoke to me again a second time, leave or die. And I kept sitting there. And finally, on the third time, he said, leave or die. I turned to Freddie and I said, I've got to leave. I've got to go. 
And so I, I left the building and went to the car and uh, left Freddie and the children in the church building. Just drove off and <laughs> left us there, way out in the woods. But she just left us there. But my point is, you can't be around people that don't believe. Right. That, that don't believe in miracles and don't believe in the Holy Spirit and right. are not demonstrating the Holy Spirit because it's going to impact your faith. And Jesus, yes, and could, their confidence. Jesus could not do mighty miracles in that place because of their unbelief. There was another time in Mark chapter 8 uh, that they brought a person to him uh, that was uh, deaf and dumb, and he had to take him out of the city uh, before he would uh, pray for him. Right. He, he couldn't keep him there in the midst of all that doubt and unbelief because the man's faith would be affected. So Jesus took him out by himself, and, and that's what we have to do sometimes. We have to just get away from people, and they may be lovely people, they may be a family, they may be people that you love, but you cannot be around them if they are filled with doubt and unbelief, and they're speaking doubt and unbelief, because it will affect you, it will diminish your faith, mm -hmm. and if you're going to have confidence uh, towards God, you've got to have faith uh, that he's, he's going to do that he's faithful to his promises that he's going to do what he promised you and that the blood covenant it, of Jesus Christ hanging on the cross saying it's finished all of that is behind the promises so that you can walk in those promises uh, faith is very important and that's the reason I wanted to emphasize it and talk just a little bit more in detail about faith but the second thing is love you know, it says perfect love, but uh, when we have perfect love, and I'm talking about 1 John 4, 17, then we'll have confidence. So our confidence operates in faith and love. love, faith and love. And then, and this is the last part of that verse, it says, on this earth, we are as Jesus is. Woo, hallelujah. As he is, so are we on this earth. Praise the Lord. Praise that, the Lord. that is exciting. So you've got these two things then, faith and love. And of course, faith doesn't work without love uh, anyway. Uh, we know that from uh, Galatians uh, 5 or 6, I believe, that our faith is energized. It has life in it uh, by love. It's, uh, it's love. And so obviously, I'm going to be talking about those two things, that your confidence comes then from those two things, faith and love. And then uh, Isaiah uh talks about i believe it's 32 17 that uh the fruit of righteousness is peace and out of that comes confidence Ooh, so we have, man, so we have confidence uh that comes from righteousness mm, and peace, peace. Uh, so peace okay mm, so here's mm. the third thing peace so how do we have confidence how can we be like abraham fully persuaded. Well, I, I know now that Abraham is the father of our faith, faith. so he obviously had faith, and he mm. obviously had love, because faith doesn't work without love, and he had righteousness, uh, because it says, because he believed God, it was counted, counted for, righteousness. for righteousness. So there he had righteousness, and the fruit of righteousness is peace. So Abraham, you know, had those I uh, had those uh, characteristics, had those, the fruit, uh, faith, the hope, uh, and, and uh, of course, we know in another scripture that uh, when there was no natural hope, uh, Abraham um, had a supernatural mm -hmm. and a spiritual hope. Oh. And so these are the kinds of things and, that uh, we need to have, and, and we produce these fruits and, and, and produce faith. Uh, and love, and hope, and, and peace, and these are the things where we draw confidence out of, and, and recognizing that our confidence is not in our strength, but it is in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because Jesus Christ is with us, and, and he will fight our battles uh, with us, um, for us. Uh, you know, there are times he said, uh, you don't have to fight in this, in this battle, battle. <laughs> for this is the Lord's battle. This is the Lord's battle. You don't have to fight in that's this battle. That's what he told Jehoshaphat. That, that's, 
that's important to know when you're supposed to fight and when when you're not you, you know in the kingdom of god you you come in like a uh, child you have to approach it like a child mm. but then at other times you take the kingdom by by, uh, force. by force and so remember what i said to begin with it because we're serving the lord by the spirit and the spirit will tell us uh, that we come in as a child or we come in as a warrior uh it's by the spirit and then uh when we do that we are going to have confidence if we're being led by the spirit of god uh we're going to have confidence in the promises, the things that God has promised, promised us, the things that have been purchased on the cross by Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where our confidence comes from. Again, it doesn't come from our feelings, emotions. We'll wake up good uh, one morning and think, oh, I'm going to have a lot of confidence. See, we're supposed to have confidence in this life. Uh, as we go out and and face the day. We're supposed to have confidence. You know, um, God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's right. Or being timid, uh, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. I believe that's 2 Timothy 1.7. Mm -hmm. A spirit of love and power and yes. uh, power and love, love and, and a sound, sound mind. mind. And so we have to focus on these things. The, the, the reason for confidence is that we can trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have See, a blood covenant. We have a blood covenant with him. He's our high priest. He's that high priest. Uh, and because of Jesus Christ and the high priest, we can make a proclamation, a strong proclamation that Jesus is with us. The Lord is is with us and mm -hmm. greater is he that is in me than he, he th and than he that's in the world greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world see we can make those bold proclamations and then we have confidence listen to me we have confidence to come into the throne room of god mm -hmm. we have confidence to come there by the blood of jesus and by the work of Jesus Christ, because we have that high priest, we have Jesus Christ as a high priest. He's with us. He'll never abandon us, never leave mm -hmm. us, never forsake mm -hmm. us. And that's the reason we can have confidence that we have a place. We have a setting, uh, a position, position in the heavenly realm. Uh, we have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So it's about Christ Jesus. See, it's not about our righteousness. Our righteousness is, is as the filthy rags, but his righteousness, glory to God, that's what we've been given because we have accepted and received him. Uh, and just like Abraham said, uh, like, like the Bible said about Abraham, righteousness that he, because he believed God, it was counted unto him unto righteousness. And he who knew no sin was made to be sin. Amen. Uh, well, hallelujah for hallelujah. you. Uh, that you might be made the righteousness, righteousness of God, God in him, in Christ Jesus. So your confidence, your confidence is in him. It's in Christ Jesus. And that's the reason you have confidence. You can go to the throne of God and receive uh, mercy and grace and to help in time of need. Amen. Are you, Amen. Are, you Amen. Facing, are you facing a time of need where you need help? Well, you need confidence that you can go and receive mercy and grace Amen. in that time. Amen. 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 And God, what God has started in your life, have confidence that he's going to bring it to pass. Uh, I want you to be encouraged today to have confidence uh, to be have confidence in your mind make a decision you can make a decision tonight that you have confidence because you have faith in christ you have the love of god being perfected in you mm -hmm. you have the righteousness of god uh, bestowed upon you by accepting jesus christ and, and that produces peace 
And you also trust God. You tr trust him. So it's not trusting in your worldly riches, not tr trusting in your intellectual abilities or your physical abilities. Uh, it's not trusting in flesh, but it's trusting in the Lord. And you'll gain confidence when you when you meditate on these things that I, I'm sharing with you tonight. You can have confidence. Now, confidence is very important. And we have confidence. See, 1 John 5, uh, 14 says we have confidence when we know his will and we ask anything according to his will. So you don't have confidence if you don't know his will. You have to have, you have to know his confidence. I mean, know his will. Well, when you find out his will, uh, you know that he will hear you. You can have That's confidence right. That's right. that he will hear you. You have confidence that you can go into the throne room of God and receive what you need. That he, and then receive the promises. He's given you promises, promise after promise. There's no end to the promises that God has given Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. And I want you to be encouraged tonight that, that you're... You might even be in a battle tonight. Yeah. But amen. let me tell you, it's not your battle. The Lord is with you. Amen. And he's going to fight your battles with you. And I hope you gain confidence uh, from this message tonight and be like Abraham, fully persuaded. Amen. And what backed up his being fully persuaded was that God had made a promise and God had made an oath. And, and it's the same thing for you. God has given you promises. And he has an oath. He has made a blood covenant through Jesus Christ uh, being crucified on the cross. He has a covenant with you. And by those two things, uh, it, it, that's all you need. <laughs> if you have those two things, those promises and, and the blood covenant promises, that's all you need. That's right. And you can receive it. Now, Abraham patiently endured and he received it. And when there was had no natural reason to hope. He still hoped uh, with a supernatural hope because God had made a promise to him and God had swore that he would bring the promise to pass. So be encouraged today that you have confidence and your confidence, your confidence rests not in your strength and not in your abilities, mm. but in the Lord Jesus Christ, who Amen. is a high priest, Amen. who has made a way for you to receive the promises. All right, Sherry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, as we continue to think about Abraham, you know, in Romans uh, chapter four, it also says that he wavered not, but was fully persuaded. And I want to talk just a moment about that word waver. And it, uh, it will... It will quench the Holy Spirit for one thing. It also will stop the flow of the blessings to you. It will uh, prevent uh, the, the promises to be fulfilled in your life. And, and so in the book of James, it says that, that, you know, if we waver, one day we're believing and the next day we're not believing, uh, something comes along that, that, uh, you know, touches our thoughts and, and we take hold of it, you know, the, the mind is you were to take every thought captive. And if it's not of the Lord, then we're to cast it out. If that thought is not from the Lord, then we're to, to lay it aside. We're to cast it away. And because we are to continue to stay in faith and stay in love, and stay in righteousness, and stay in peace, and those things will help us to receive the promises. The promises are there. You know, the Lord has not taken them away from us because they're in Christ Jesus, and what Jesus has done, Jesus said, it's finished. It's finished. Those promises are yours, George. Those promises are yours, Lucy. Those promises are yours, Grace and Gwen and Sharon and Joy, those those promises and whoever is watching this this video, the promises are yours and they will not change because they're in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said it is finished. He shed his blood. He 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 anyone who 
becomes uh, a Christian and believes that Jesus is the son of God, they, they have the blood poured over them. And that blood covenant allows us to partake of the promises of God. And, but I think about the wavering. And so in the name of Jesus, uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, any doubt or unbelief that the enemy has tried to bring you uh, this week uh, is gone right now in Jesus' name. I destroy it. I break the assignment uh, of the enemy off of your minds, off of your bodies, uh, off of your hearts in the name of Jesus, that you will believe in the word of God and you will believe what the word says. And, and therefore you can receive the promises uh, fully persuaded that that helps me uh, to be fully persuaded when I know that I can't waver. I can't believe one day that I'm healed and whole and free of cancer. And the next day, believe a lie from the, from the enemy. Believe what the doctors are saying. But, and that's where I was. Uh, 27, 28 years ago, you know, I would, you know, I would wake up and I would be encouraged. I would be uh, walking by faith and, and, and not by sight. And all the ring, 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 the telephone would ring and, and it would be another doctor's report uh, saying, you know, well, the, you know, another confirmation that you have the second highest malignant thyroid cancer, you know? And so, you know, what do I do with that? What, you know, do I entertain that? Do I think on that? Do I meditate on that? No, you know, I cast it aside and I go back to the word of God uh, so that I can stay fully persuaded. You know, Abraham waited, what was it, 25 years? Yeah. Abraham waited 25 years for Isaac to come along. 25 years. You know, some people can't even wait an hour. You know, everybody wants fast food. They want it right then. They want to microwave, you know, all of the of the things from God. But many times there's a, there's a, he patiently waited. That's what it said. He patiently waited for the promise and, and knew that God would do this. And so if God has promised you something, then don't give up. Don't cast it aside. Don't say, well, it didn't. It hasn't happened yet. So, you know, and some people are saying that about the return of, of Jesus Christ. Well, he hasn't come yet. And so I wonder if he's coming. Well, I can tell you people that he is coming. And we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. We need to be walking in, in faith and be fully persuaded that he is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.